Hey everybody, Daniel here from Basement Tech. Well, regular viewers of the station will recall that I'm in the process of converting this CNC Shark from its proprietary controller to one based on Linux CNC. In this episode, the second one of the series, we're going to talk about stepper motor driver cables. Upgrading from some that are completely inadequate to a much better set. Let's get started. Here are the new cables that I purchased. I purchased them from an eBay vendor called Len, L-E-N-1007, also known as Corvette Guy 50 um, on eBay. I believe his name is Vince, if I've got all the details um, correct. You can see right away, they're very much more substantial than those white cables, which I never intended to use. And if I can find one of the markings here, I'll try to show you um, 300 volt rating, 20 gauge wire. All eight pins of these high quality DB9s are carried all the way through. Now this kit also comes with these adapter DB9 things. I'll open one of those up and show you what those are all about. All right, well note right away these cables are built like extensions, female on one end, male on the other end. The G540 requires a male on the cable on that end, and my motor cables um, require the female on the other end. Let me give you a look at that, if I can get this to part. There you go. So they require a female on that end. So as I said, strictly speaking, I don't need to do anything to these cables to use them. I do, however, want to show you the insides. All right, well, time to do something extremely painful. Ah. I can't do it to destroy such a beautifully built cable. Sorry, Vince, I have to do it. I want to show everybody what's inside. Clip. Okay, one off. You can see lurking in the background that adapter, but we'll get there in a minute. I want to show you these. Look, all eight conductors, nicely color coded, and all 20 gauge uh, all the way through. The cable, the outer cable itself, is foil shielded, sort of double shielded even. Um, which helps uh, contain the noise that stepper motors inherently make. And here it is in all of its glory. Um, now to compare that, let me not so painfully clip a uh, one of the um, connectors off of the end of this white cable. And I'll do the same, stripping that back and give you an idea of how things look. Okay, all the clipping and stripping done. And I think you can get the idea of what I'm talking about now. These are microfine, I don't know, maybe number 30 conductors, 30 gauge conductors here. Very, very tiny. And I'm not claiming that these wires are going to melt or anything like that, but the, both the static and dynamic performance of a thicker conductor is gonna be better for stepper motors. So let's see if I can get these right next to each other and you can really get an idea of the difference in size. The 20 gauge here at the bottom on Vince's cables and the, I don't know, 30, um, uh, or less gauge wires up here. The white wire is also shielded with foil, so in that sense, uh, comparing apples to apples, it's a good quality cable, just not thick enough for, um, just not substantial or thick enough for this uh, motor driver application. So I'll put the little adapter on and show you the final configuration. Well, before we get there, let me show you a little experiment that I ran to drive this point one step further home. Here I'm just showing again the connection between the Gecko G540 driver and the motor through these very inadequate um, motor driver cables. Last time, in the last video, in the introductory video, I claimed that I felt that these cables were actually getting a little bit warm. I didn't say hot, I didn't say they were melting. But I wanted to convince myself that that was real and not just some kind of a phantom. So I happen to have this little thermometer that has a little remote sensor at the end of that black wire there on the end. I'm going to actually connect um, mechanically, just tape that sensor onto the cable and see if what the temperature does. Um, I'm starting with the system off, so the cable itself is the same as ambient at about 71 degrees. Um, again, not a highly scientific experiment, and the goal here is just to show that my perception of that cable was real. So, off we go. This is actually happening over a period of about 15 minutes. Um, 
and you will see that the cable actually does get a little warm. Near the end of this time period, I actually moved the axis back and forth just a bit to see if that would add any um, uh, heat uh, to the cable, and it actually did. All right, well, let's retrace those steps with a more substantial cable in place. You can see on this end, I repaired the connector that I cut off with a soldered on one. This very much more substantial cable comes around and goes into this, which is that um, no solder connector thing. So basically it t it's an easy way to take um, raw motor leads and connect them to a DB9 without having to solder. You notice also I tucked in the current limiting resistor for the G540 in there as well. To be honest, uh, for me, uh, soldering is pretty quick and easy. And this one was a little bit fiddly to deal with, but I suppose if I had to swap out a motor, it might be easier. Jerry's still out on this one. I think I did see there's a next version of this that maybe makes this a bit easier. Anyway, it's done for now. I'll swap out the other two cables and away we go. Well, I'm gonna leave that vi this video here. Uh, everything is back to running and with the new one cable, I'll replace the other two cables and we'll be in good shape. Um, the next video is going to deal with, Daniel, why did you put this new piece of aluminum up here and what is it used for? Well, that question is going to be answered when we add limit switches to all three axes. Um, and you'll see that in the next video. If you like these videos, give them a thumbs up. If you really, really like it and don't want to miss any videos, subscribe and ask for notifications. Thanks. Bye.